Welcome to Nuevo United Methodist Church's online Good Friday service. I'm asking you all to join me in, in this evening's um, call to worship. I will go ahead and read the first line, and then I ask all of you to repeat the second line along with me. It will appear on the bottom of your screen. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Again, welcome to Nuevo United Methodist Church's online Good Friday service. We're glad that you could join us this e today, and we hope that the message here rings true on this Good Friday for you, and it helps guide you during this time as we lead in to the Easter holiday. Our first uh, reading today comes from the book of Psalms. It's Psalms chapter 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you our fathers put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breasts. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Basham encircle me. Roaring lions tearing their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a, like a pot sheared, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you will I fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to the people yet unborn, for he has done it. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted upon the cross so that he might draw the whole world to himself. Grant that we, who glory in his death for our salvation, may also glory in his call to take up our cross and follow him. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our next scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 25 through 39. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice on the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you 
who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land and until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Aloy, Aloy, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Leave him alone now. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he had died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. In Mark 15.33, we are told that the whole earth was dark. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. Now, while Jesus hung on the cross for your sins and for my sins, the whole earth was dark. You know, way back in the, the very first verse in the Bible, back in Genesis, way back in the very beginning, we are told that when God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. The whole earth was dark. And then God said, let there be light. And the light was good. And the entire creation was good. And then at some point later in, later in time, things went terribly, terribly wrong. See, from that point forward, the world became dark again, twisted, broken, hurt, lost, and void. You know, C.S. Lewis had a, a science fiction tale he put out. It was called Out of the Silent Planet. It's, it was where a, a human being visits a planet which is inhabited by creatures who have never experienced the fall of humankind. See, this planet is a, a bright and beautiful place. There is no sin there. There is no death there. There is no murder there. It is so unlike where this, this space traveler has come from. Now, when the man from Earth is trying to describe to the creatures where he's from, they finally get it. Ah, you are out of the silent planet, they say. We remember that place. See, we saw that great planet so very long ago. It was the brightest of all the planets that God had created. It was so beautiful. It was so magnificent. And then, and then it went dark. And we haven't seen it since. What happened? What went wrong? In Romans chapter 5, we are told that sin entered the world through one person, Adam. And death came through sin. But now... The righteous requirements necessary for life are met for everyone through the righteous act of one person, Jesus Christ. At the very right moment, Jesus Christ died for ungodly people. And God shows his love for us because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Into the silent planet and dark planet, light has come. You know, in the beginning of John's gospel, we are told that Jesus came into the world as the light. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The light was in the world and the world came into being through the light. But the world didn't recognize the light. But those who did welcome him and those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children. Children of the light. You know, as Jesus hung on that cross, all the powers of darkness were working against the light and against the love of God. 
He was crucified as an outlaw. People walking by insulted him and shook their heads in disgust. The chief priests made fun of him. The whole earth was dark, except, except the light of the world who hung on that cross. And try and try as it could, the darkness couldn't put out the light. Finally, Jesus let out a loud cry, and he died. And the curtain in the sanctuary was torn from top to bottom. In his death, Jesus paid for our sins as our high priest. He tore down the curtain that separated humanity from God. And now, by his death, we lost, broken, frightened sinners are free to accept his free offer of reconciliation and atonement with God. We are told that, that when the centurion, one of the men who, who fastened Jesus' body to the cross, who, who pounded those nails in through his hands and his feet, stood facing Jesus. And when he saw how he died, he said, this man was certainly God's son. You see, he was the first person to believe in Christ after Christ died. He was there. He had helped to try and extinguish the light. He had watched as Jesus promised a place in paradise to one of the outlaws on another cross. He had watched as Jesus prayed, Father, forgive those who are killing me, for they do not know what they are doing. He had watched as Jesus made sure his mother would be taken care of after he was gone. And he had watched as the whole earth went dark. And yet, the light on the cross never went out. Evil could not extinguish the light of God. The darkness could not overcome it. So on this Good Friday, as we are separated and standing alone with Jesus' blood on our hands, facing our crosses, will we join with this, this Roman centurion who over 2,000 years ago exclaimed, This man was certainly... God's Son. Amen. Mm -hmm.